Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to a new edition of the Daily Debate. In tonight's show we're going to be focusing on our maritime transportation. Now this is in light of the World Bank actually announcing and declaring that the East Bursaid port is considered one of the best global ports globally, worldwide, which is a great achievement in itself. And we're going to be talking about the reasons and how did the East Bursaid port come into or reach that position and the, uh, the potential for such ports, not just East Bursaid, but all the Egyptian ports. But before we start doing that, let's check out some of the main stories making the news today. And we'll start off with President Abdel Fattah Sisi, who witnessed part of the examinations held for the applicants for job vacancies at the Ministry of Education and Vocational Education on Tuesday. President Sisi followed up through the system for recording results of the electronic exams, all data of the applicants and results they had achieved. The head of state affirmed the state's keenness to follow the highest standards to select the best qualified cadres scientifically, technically and personally after passing a comprehensive and integrated training period. During the visit, the president met with a number of senior breeders of the Egyptian Arabian horses and students of the military academy. Tuesday's examinations were being conducted in collaboration with the military academy after applicants passed the comprehensive training program. The program is designed to choose and prepare cadres with the best scientific, technical and personal qualifications. Also today, President Abdel Fattah Hassisi has met some of the students of the equestrian round number one at the Egyptian Higher Military Academy. And Foreign Minister Semeh Shukri started his official visit to the Hungarian capital Budapest today, aiming to boost bilateral relations between the two countries. Shukri held talks with his Hungarian counterpart, Peter Siarto, and the two top diplomats probed means of pushing forward bilateral cooperation and coordination regarding a number of regional and international issues of mutual concern. And under the slogan, A Day of Gratitude, the Egyptian radio honoured a number of media pioneers for their big role and sincere efforts throughout the past years. During a ceremony held at Studio 45, head of the National Media Authority, Hessein Zin, welcomed the media pioneers and awarded them with honour shields. He expressed his appreciation and gratitude for their relentless efforts to present great and serious media messages. Zayn reiterated that many generations have been taught media at their hands, asserting that the radio still preserves its position for different sects of the society as it offers patriotic and professional media content, which aims at increasing the people's awareness and enlightening their thoughts, as well as fixing values and ethics within the society. For his part, head of the radio sector, Mohammed Nawar, thanked them for attending the ceremony while extending his thanks to Zain for supporting media pioneers and the whole workers in the radio sector. These were some of the main stories making the news today, but now turning our attention to tonight's topic, the World Bank has announced that the East Bursaid port is at one of the top global ports. Let's check out this report and we'll be right back.
According to a report issued recently by the World Bank, the Suez Canal Economic Zone announced that East Port Said port ranked 10th in the container performance. The Suez Canal Zone report indicated that evaluation was issued by the World Bank to assess performance of ports based on the time spent by the ship in the port, the efficiency of the port infrastructure, the efficiency of the berths, the quality of roads, the linking of the port with railways and effectiveness of procedures and the extent to which the port is used by various agencies in the field of container uploading. It pointed out that the port's trading volume affects the evaluation in addition to the digitization of port services, as this report aims to help create a standard for those interested in the field of maritime transport in the global economy. Suez Canal Zone CEO Walid Gamal Jean expressed his pride with what came in this report, explaining that cooperation and integration among the zone, the Suez Canal Authority and the Suez Canal Container Handling Company is one of the reasons of the successes of East Port Said within international ports. He added that the economic zone is concerned with all its affiliated ports and is working to complete development work to reach highest international standards and logistics. This is in addition to launching ship supply services at the authority's ports within days, including East Port Said, referring to the port's readiness to receive many projects as the berths are ready with international standards and depths which allow receiving giant ships and their latest generations. He pointed to the completion of the contract to operate the current berths of five kilometers in full and negotiations are underway with Abu Dhabi Ports Group to build and develop the superstructure, manage, operate and re-deliver a multi-purpose terminal, dry bulk and liquid bulk for petroleum services at East Port Said berths with a length of 1.5 kilometers in addition to negotiating the establishment of a logistics area. The port is situated in a distinguished location at the east of the northern entrance of Suez Canal in conjunction of three continents and on the crossroads of the confluence of the east and west. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and we're joined here tonight in the studio by Engineer Mustafa Nageri, the Vice Chairman of the Egyptian Exporters Association and also the Chairman of the Agricultural and Irrigation Committee of the Egyptian Businessmen Association. Engineer Nageri, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Hani, for the invitation. Uh, Engineer Nageri, now, first of all, um, the World Bank announcing that the East Borsaid port is one of the best worldwide. Now, it is a great uh, accolade to have by the World Bank, but taking it step by step, how did the East Borsaid port in specific reach such uh, uh, international heights and uh, receive international acclaim? Uh, of course, it, it was a good news for mm -hmm. Egypt and for uh, the business people in Egypt to have this announcement uh, that uh, East Port Said the port is one of the best 10 mm -hmm. ports all over the world. Yes. As uh, I can tell that the, the, the prime location, the location is, uh, is, uh, is really very uh, precious and uh, it is located in the uh, nearest route between the west and the east mm -hmm. and also it's benefiting from uh, the multilateral and the bilateral trade agreements which between Europe and uh, North Africa and Africa and the Middle East. Mm -hmm. So the location from my point of view is, uh, is very prime and uh, uh, very attractive. On the other side the services which have been done because this port uh, uh, was launched in 2004, mm -hmm. uh, but after uh, establishing the uh, economical Swiss zone, yes. the Swiss zone economical uh, area, uh, it, it, it really the port have seen a lot of improvement and a lot of expansions as well. Mm -hmm. So there was a plan that it will reach 14 kilometers of case long lengths. Mm -hmm. At the moment, it is about seven, mm -hmm. 
Uh, and it is uh, serving up to uh, 3.8 million TU, which is mm -hmm. a container, yes. per year. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the evaluation was that 90% of this uh, uh, total number of TUs are transit cargo, which means mm -hmm. that all shipping lines are uh, 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 attracted to this port to have the transit as a hub for them. So 90% is a very positive sign. Yes. And 10% is a final destination to Egypt, trade, mm -hmm. as we say. We have other ports, of course, yes. are serving, but mm -hmm. when we see that the shipping lines are uh, focusing on uh, East Port Said port, to have it as a hub, which means that the services are okay, the time uh, 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 needed for the charging and uh, and the loading and the disbursement costs are attractive. Mm -hmm. So yes. that's why was the evaluation of the International Bank uh, choosing uh, East Port Said port. Yes. Uh, I can tell that, of course, they have uh, more deep draft than mm -hmm. before. It was before. 14, 15 meters now, so it was allowing to receive a specific type of vessels, mm -hmm. and it reached 18, and now it is 20 meter depths, mm -hmm. which means it is uh, bigger and heavier vessels. Yes, it mm -hmm. is. It is always ready for having big vessels, mother vessels, as we say. It, it's having container terminal. It's having multi-purpose terminal. It is having. Roro terminal, it mm -hmm. is having a grain terminal, so there is a lot of act services which this port is offering for the traders and for the shipping lines. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's it's uh, it's a good yes. I mean uh, uh, port which added to the the other nine yes. huge ports yes. of Egypt. Well, the Suez Canal Economic Zone or the Suez Canal Authority has been working on developing the whole economic zones, the industrial zones, and also the ports uh, within the, a, a very integral artery in terms of international trade, the Suez Canal. Correct. Now, how can we transfer the sort of development that has been taking place for the East Port Road, uh, port rather, to the rest of the Suez Canal ports? I mean, you've mentioned the prime location uh, for the East Port Said port. But what about the rest of the ports? How can we actually work on getting not just the East Poseid ports among the top 10, but maybe even more? No, no, no. There is always improvement mm -hmm. in our ports. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, Damietta are, are having uh, uh, extreme expansions mm -hmm. year by year. Yes. Alexandria port is also in the same. Mm -hmm. uh, Safaga also. I mean, it's a, it's, a, uh, it's a big lung, as we say, for the trade for Upper Egypt. And mm -hmm. we have been talking before about that having routes, uh, roads mm -hmm. in Upper Egypt is serving a lot to minimize the cost for the people of Upper Egypt. Mm -hmm. Because you can load easily to Safaga, and from Safaga to Kenna, you have only 160 or 70 kilometers. Yes. While before, Upper Egypt have to move up, people have to move up to the Delta, to get their goods and come back. Mm -hmm. So you are saving by, by good logistics, by improving your uh, ports facilities mm -hmm. and uh, activities. Of course, you are uh, developing the country and you are minimizing the cost. Mm -hmm. Well, th there are negotiations that are underway with the Abu, uh, Abu Dhabi uh, Ports Group to build and develop a superstructure for the East Port Said uh, road that would uh, include um, a multi-purpose terminal, a dry bulk, liquid bulk that would be involved within petroleum products. Getting international expertise or know-how uh, in terms of servicing and also building uh, and developing such ports, how how much can we rely on inter or how much should we rely on international expertise in our development of ports and how can we actually build and learn from this international expertise and know-how to be able to have our own development uh, port groups? Uh, I can tell you that uh, uh, for the last 10 years there is always 
uh, merge mm -hmm. and investment is done all over the ports of the world. It, it depends about the trade uh, road, as mm -hmm. we say, or the trade route. Mm -hmm. So, uh, of course, we have before experience in Sokhna port with uh, investment, uh, big investment maritime company from Emirates, and mm -hmm. now it's coming from uh, Abu Zabi, mm -hmm. also Emirates. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I just was in Spain a uh, yes. few days ago, mm -hmm. and there was a big Chinese companies are investment, investing in Valencia port. Mm -hmm. So it is well known. It, it, it's, it doesn't mean uh, 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 that it is a, a changing uh, uh, experiences or something like that. No, mm -hmm. Egypt, we have a great experience in managing ports, mm -hmm. but it's always having to attract investment for not even using the port as a port. Mm -hmm. No, if we look to East Porsaid port, it's having a big yard, a very big backyard mm -hmm. as we say and it will be industrial zone it will be logistic area it will be added value uh, services mm -hmm. and this is is attracting investors to come to try to increase their capability to uh, uh, at least uh, benefit from the the low cost of yes. uh, of egyptian ports mm -hmm. if we make a comparison we are having between 30 to 50 percent less cost in power in labor uh, cost mm -hmm. uh, among the mediterranean and the, the middle east and north african ports we mm -hmm. are always cheaper yes. so we are always attractive in using our ports plus we are also attractive in serving and offering industrial zones and logistics area which will increase a lot of job opportunities and will attract the trade to the uh, to the nearest road as mm -hmm. we talked before everybody yes. in the whole world that are looking to minimize the transit and the transport area mm -hmm. according to what we have seen uh, in the in the covid 19 yes. and so on it was a big problem in the logistics all over the world mm -hmm. and the areas was so far from china to lot to the us or to the latin or to africa so everybody is trying to be in yes. the middle Mm -hmm. So Egypt is, is benefiting from the prime location in general. In general, I mean, you, you were on a tour that took you to Spain, Italy and Austria recently and you deal with um, a, a lot of foreign uh, companies and uh, investors and obviously being involved with the Egyptian uh, Exporters uh, Association. Now, when you talk to these importers, foreign importers then uh, importing our uh, products, how much attention and weight do they give looking at the ports or the time taken to transfer our products to their respective countries? I mean, obviously, they do talk about the specifics and the qualities of the actual products, but what about the transfer of our products from Egypt to their countries? Okay, uh, uh, let me tell you that uh, uh, we were in Italy mm -hmm. about 20 exporters uh, of the in the agro uh, sector and we were participating in one of the uh, important fairs in Europe mm -hmm. agro fairs it's called the Macfruit it is in Italy in Remini and uh, the Egyptian pavilion was was very good mm -hmm. I was uh, there myself uh, representing Exepolink and uh, trying mm -hmm. to assist the Egyptian exporters and the exhibitors and really it was very successful fair and I think that uh, all the exhibitors were happy to see the attraction of uh, uh, the buyers to them mm -hmm. and I was always telling them that we have to uh, calculate our competitiveness mm -hmm. and we have to discuss with them because they are also in the agricultural field so the language is not a barrier mm -hmm. any, anymore mm -hmm. so they are having uh, uh, challenges in, mm -hmm. in Europe mainly according to the drought according to the high prices of power according to the high prices of labors transport all 
the mechanism of the production is, is really getting uh, tough to them and hard. Mm -hmm. And always they are talking about that Egypt is a big player in the agri sector today and the future. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have seen that, that our prices is more competitive. And according to the logistics, as we uh, mentioned before, that the Ministry of Transport have launched uh, um, a service of a rural vessel serving specifically from Egypt to one of the Italian ports. Mm -hmm. And so it will save time. And according to save time, you mean that you can load by sea than the air uh -huh. because some shelf life uh, uh, time of a specific commodities uh -huh. are short uh -huh. so we used to load it by air uh -huh. it's a very high uh, yes. uh, 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 freight uh -huh. but according if you have a faster vessel and serve it directly so you can load such goods or some of that goods by sea and at that time you can be more competitive. Uh -huh. So this is our strategy and we have been in contact with them to increase the number of uh, the rural vessels and this, uh, the ferry boats and I did the same in Spain as well. Uh -huh. I sit with one group in Spain to try to use one of the Spanish port to, to be our hub and to have a yard uh -huh. there specifically for our products either it's agro or, or or other uh, non-agro. Yes. So at the end, you have always to look for the logistics, in and out mm -hmm. at the moment. Yes. You have to to try to attract the, the buyer with a cheaper cost mm -hmm. at the end. So we did our job in, and now we are doing our job out. At yes. the end, we have to push and promote for the Egyptian product uh, to be always there. Yes. Yeah. Well, you've mentioned really working on the competitiveness yeah. of not just our products but also about our logistics yeah. manifested mainly now in our ports. Yeah. Now, how do we increase our competitiveness for such ports? Is it by lowering our fees for the ports, lowering our fees for the services provided by the ports such as the East Said port or is it just developing or uh, really working on developing our services provided and keeping up with the same sort of international standard of fees for the services with the other international ports? Uh, I can tell you we are not lowering our fees. Mm -hmm. We are calculating our fees according to the uh, uh, other ports in mm -hmm. the Mediterranean, let mm -hmm. us say. So um, maybe in some time we are lowering to try to attract mm -hmm. But at the time, at the end, everything is calculated. Mm -hmm. There is always calculation between cost and time and power and labors and so on, so on, so mm -hmm. You have always to be attractive. So when you are attractive, many shipping lines are going to serve uh, to your uh, port. Mm -hmm. And that's what we see in Suez port, that 90% of the total number which is served during, during is transit. Mm -hmm. That means that they, they see that the cost of storage, the cost of, of handling, the cost of disbursement, of the fees, the service, it, mm -hmm. is, it is good. Mm -hmm. So I mean always the, the uh, uh, numbers is, is telling the, the truth, as mm -hmm. we say. Yes. So that's why, uh, thanks God, this news is not coming from Egypt. So some mm -hmm. people might say, why are you doing that or why are you spending? No, mm -hmm. this is the international bank. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, you've mentioned how investors have been uh, really um, putting the Egyptian sort of agro products, for instance, in specific, uh, at such a, a high ranking worldwide and really predicting the same for the future. Do you feel that such uh, importance and spotlight being uh, focused on Egypt is it because of the nat natural sort of progression of the uh, agro market worldwide or is it maybe also stemmed by the Russian-Ukrainian uh, conflict that has disrupted maritime routes within the European uh, continent and also uh, the Mediterranean or is it because of the global inflation and re economic recession taking over the world that is a, a result from the Russian-Ukrainian conflict? 
uh, it is all together mm -hmm. coming uh, uh, to give only one answer, okay? Uh, that uh, the population of the world it will increase the demand of the food and of the trade and of, of the commodities and of the machinery. Everything will increase. Mm -hmm. And every country have to calculate their uh, 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 efficiency and competitiveness at the end. Mm -hmm. Every country have to do that. So some countries are losing that mm -hmm. according to items uh, and the inputs which is really out of their hands okay mm -hmm. and uh, of course we don't hope that uh, of course we, we we always want everybody to be healthy because mm -hmm. healthy partner is a healthy uh, trade yes. as we say yes uh, but at the end we uh, what i have seen of course is that according to the crisis mm -hmm. of the russian ukrainian war okay or the as we i like to say the russian war to ukraine mm -hmm. Uh, there is always a uh, 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 crisis have occurred mm -hmm. and you can see that even that there is restriction and sanctions that Europe is not exporting mm -hmm. to Russia which is a big block yes. and all the trucks of Europe are not serving in Russia mm -hmm. that means it should be a, a disaster for them mm -hmm. huh? because Russia was was a big market for yes. them. Even with though mm -hmm. they are losing their competitiveness at the moment in mm -hmm. Europe. The cost of the food is increasing a lot. The cost of the inputs are increasing a lot. And, and also on the other side, Egypt uh, local currency is, is devaluated. Mm -hmm. So that's why at the end the export uh, uh, product of Egypt is cheaper. Mm -hmm. Okay, is it cheaper? We are trying to increase our productivity mm -hmm. because you cannot trade more unless you produce more. Mm -hmm. So we have to produce more. And that's why we are always talking in not only in one channel. We mm -hmm. are talking about investment laws. We are talking about the Supreme huh, Council of the Investment and the Supreme Council of Export. They were launch it in only two days. Mm -hmm. That means that the message is, is in the government. Mm -hmm. Okay, that they are both linked to each other. Mm -hmm. You cannot uh, 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 talk about exports without talking about facilitating all the channels to uh, attract investors. Mm -hmm. And the investors want to come to a stable market. But at the end, our always uh, 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 message is that exports are increasing to Egypt, mm -hmm. imports are decreasing. Yes. This is our message. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, part of the development for the East Bursaid port was actually introducing the bunkering services. Now, bunkering services are to be launched in uh, East Bursaid port, Ain Sukhna port. Let's check out this report and we'll be right back. The bunkering service will be launched in a few days at East Port Said Port and in Sukhna Port. Green fuel bunkering will be available soon and a number of MOUs were signed to establish green hydrogen and green ammonia plants. The first of which began operating in November during COP27 with a capacity of 100 megawatts. In 2022, Egypt signed 23 MOUs in the field of green hydrogen production. Of those, 10 were converted into framework agreements, including nine whose value is $85 billion, and that would create 45,000 direct jobs and 230,000 indirect jobs. Meanwhile, the Suez Canal Economic Zone signed memorandum of understanding with Germany's energy storage firm H2 Industries to build the first waste to hydrogen plant worldwide. A $4 billion investment is expected to produce 300,000 tons of green hydrogen per annum. The plant to be built in East Port Said will receive up to 4 million tons of wastes every year. The center noted that waste loads will be kept at Mediterranean entrance of the Suez Canal. The MOU was signed on the sidelines of the, the sixth edition of the Egyptian Can with Industry Conference held in the new administrative capital in late May.
and the general authority for the Suez Canal Economic Zone and Suez Canal Container Terminal have unveiled their plans to design and operate a second terminal at Port Said East Port. The terminal will be installed between Suez Canal Zone and the existing SCCT area. The targeted additional volume after the expansion will reach 2 million TEUs as part of 500 million US dollars investment deal. The project aims to expand the existing SCCT facility. A joint venture container terminal with APM terminals as the majority shareholder. This project reinforces Suez Canal Zone's consistent support of Egypt's economic strategy, which aims to develop Egyptian ports to maximize their role in the global maritime trade and to exploit various investments to create job opportunities. The project expands the existing container terminal in Port Said East Port with cumulative investments estimated at 500 million U.S. dollars providing 1,000 direct and indirect job opportunities, especially for the residents of Port Said and North Sinai cities. The new technologically advanced terminal will operate on clean and renewable energy based on electric equipment. The latest generation port equipment will be used in the project, including 12 ship to shore cranes, 30 rubber tired gantry cranes, and 90 trucks, as well as supporting equipment and advanced information technology systems. Once operational in 2025, the terminal will create over 1,000 new direct jobs in Port Said, in addition to indirect jobs and business opportunities created within the whole port ecosystem. The expansion project aims to increase the terminal's operating capacity by over 40 percent to serve the future network requirements of its customers. It is worth mentioning that East Port Said received approximately 1,524 vessels in 2022. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, continuing our discussion with the engineer Nageri. Sir, now, when we talk about exporting our products and we talk about our uh, ports, uh, focusing on East Port Said port and in Sofna port and such, we're talking about exporting uh, a sort of uh, a trademark or a brand. And you've mentioned it off air, one of the most important things to really uh, have a lot of added value for our products is the branding and marketing and really selling that brand. So how can branding our products can be also transferred into branding our ports, having the East Port Said port as a brand that is not just uh, a port, having uh, a whole uh, uh, vital, uh, living, exciting city around the port. It would be a brand that would be known internationally, worldwide. Yeah. Uh, brand means quality. Mm -hmm. It means uh, a profession in, 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 in work. Mm -hmm. huh? This is the brand, okay? And uh, we remember before we used to have the Egyptian cotton as mm -hmm. a brand. Yes. And 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 but to have the brand and to support the brand and to secure the brand, mm -hmm. it needs a lot of legislations, mm -hmm. a lot, because it's your own baby. If I have a brand, it's my own baby. Yes. If I cannot protect it, and somebody can deceive it or imitate and sell mm -hmm. my brand with. 50% of the price. They will kill me. They will kill the brand. Mm -hmm. So the point to get a brand is, is an issue and to protect it and to try to secure it because it is added value. The price can be increased according to the brand. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the issues. Of course, s some people are, are working, some people are afraid to, to, to touch it, but of course in the garments, few factories here are able to have the brand. Mm -hmm. In the agriculture, we have also working, uh, we have been also working on having a uh, produce of Egypt or product of Egypt as a brand mm -hmm. for, for all the, the agriculture crops. Yes. Uh, in other sectors also you can uh, go for branding. Mm -hmm. Some items doesn't need branding, but some uh, others are really 
you can add value of that. And mm -hmm. I, we have been talking about an example before that Egypt is exporting about 6 point million tons of fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. okay? But the revenue is about 3.3 billion dollar, mm -hmm. which means that each export ton is costing $500. And this is very cheap, mm -hmm. very cheap. If you can reach 600, 700, or 800, you mm -hmm. can imagine how much in only this sector you can increase. I'm not talking about quantity, I'm talking about a value. Mm -hmm. So we have always to look for the map of exports, thanks to the Egyptian citrus, because it's number yes. one, one point eight million, mm -hmm. uh, potatoes also, and um, onion uh, is number three, but at the end, the three of them is a cheap commodity, mm -hmm. ranging between 400, uh, 350 to 500 dollars maximum. Mm -hmm. But what about the grapes? What about the strawberries? What about the berries? Mm -hmm. There is a huge map of berries. We have only the strawberry in Egypt, but we don't have the blackberry, the blueberry, the raspberry, mm -hmm. all of them are sold by gram mm -hmm. in Europe with a higher value. So you have to divert your export items to the high value, mm -hmm. plus branding. Yes. Both of them you cannot reach uh, 100 billion dollars, you can reach 300 billion dollars. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of how you can increase uh, your ability and you, you always look for the added value. Yes. Okay. Well, you spoke about um, the branding and really protecting and securing your own products. Well, some products might not be e easy to replicate, such as fruit and vegetables yeah. and energy, for instance. So do you think that maybe we should be focusing more on already secure products, such as agro products and energy products as well? Would that be uh, good for our exporting strategy? Uh, even the brands, uh, the local brands, can be deceived. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is well known and mm -hmm. it needs a, a strong arm mm -hmm. to, protect, to protect the royalty mm -hmm. for the owners of the brands. Because many, many people are suffering, I, I know, mm -hmm. not even in Egypt, mm -hmm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. The branding, uh, if it is not secured, you can have uh, copy one and copy two. Even in the markets in Europe, they are talking about copy one and copy two, mm -hmm. about the brands. Yes. So, but at the end, it's always having high value. If you have uh, a genuine product mm -hmm. with the brand, of course, uh, you have to pay for that. Mm -hmm. Many people are, are, are happy to pay. It's uh, yes. really, it is a, a, a narrow strip, as we say, but mm -hmm. it, at the end, it increases the revenues for countries. Mm -hmm. A lot. I, I, we were yes. talking about Holland. Mm -hmm. Holland is agriculture uh, country and also industrial country and also service provider country. But at least in the agriculture, they are uh, investing in seedlings mm -hmm. and seeds. Yes. And it, it, they are getting revenues 100 times as the product itself or yes. the fruit. They are not wasting mm -hmm. time. They don't have too much land. Yes. So the do you know how to benefit? So in Egypt, we are always working to increase our uh, value-added mm -hmm. uh, products and to improve uh, uh, the prices of the commodities. Mm -hmm. So at the end, we are moving step by step and we see that as a yes. value and as a quantity, but we can do better. One final question, Engineer Nageri, with uh, high acclaim for our Egyptian ports, mainly the East Said port. Do you feel, as part of the uh, Egyptian Exporters uh, Association, do you feel that maybe we should be making more use of such a port? Do we need, do the exporters need more incentives, for instance, to be able, uh, or uh, more economic incentives in terms of through using such ports because it would be a win-win situation for exporters and for the Suez uh, Canal Authority as well? Uh, from our point of view as mm -hmm. exporters, we are always uh, protected through mm -hmm. the, 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 the government mm -hmm. to try to uh, have minimum 
uh, cost for damage and dispatch. Mm -hmm. The point is always yes. for import. Mm -hmm. But at the end, we say that the trade is two, two wings. wings. Mm -hmm. And we have always to attract importers, uh, exporters from, uh, I mean, from, uh, from everywhere, mm -hmm. and shipping lines. So ports should be attractive. And yes. the meaning of to be attractive is to try to get them to use our port. Mm -hmm. by good storage, by cheap costs. We have not to say lower, mm -hmm. but we have to be competitive according to the neighboring uh, uh, seaports. Yes. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, it is definitely uh, a great recognition by the World Bank to have East Said uh, port as one of the best, 10 best uh, ports globally. And definitely this is one extra uh, step trying to put Egypt as a good maritime logistics hub. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this edition of the Daily Debate. But before we go, I'd like to thank my very distinguished guest, the engineer Mustafa Nageri, the vice chairman of the Egyptian Exporters Association and chairman of the Agricultural and Irrigation Committee of the Egyptian Businessmen Association. Engineer Nageri, thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Hani. Thank you so thank much. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, please stay tuned for more coming up on Not International. I'm Hani Saif. Thank you for joining us.